channel. My name is Jessica. I'm the Friday Family Coach and this is part one of a two-part video series where we are talking about can dogs become sick from humans and how to tell if your dog is sick or how to tell if your pet is sick. So in, again, this is part one of a two-part video series and we're primarily in this video going to be talking about can a dog get sick from a human and then in the second video we're going to be talking about how to tell if your dog is sick. So First thing I want to say is that I can't say the C word. Um, <laughs> I, I can't have any uh, ads running on my channel if I use certain words and that is a word. I can't use the C word, but we all know what I'm talking about because right now and all this weirdness that is going on, we have a new or novel virus going around and there seem, it, it's like we knew then, oh my gosh, can dogs get sick? Can, can this affect dogs and cats? And then we knew it was, everything was okay. And then all of a sudden there was this, are we sure that are, are dogs getting this? Can dogs get this? So right now I just want to assure everyone that the WHO, the CDC, the American uh, Veterinary Medical Association, AVMA, all agree, IDEX, I-D-E-X-X. -X. Hey, my kiddo. You gonna go out see me? Would you put it? IDEX Labs has run thousands of tests and they have all come back negative. The new uh, virus that we are seeing right now is currently considered and it seems that it is going to continue to be classified as a human virus. Now, when we're talking about uh, viruses and diseases that can be passed from human to animal, uh, from animal to human, vice versa, uh, there is a term for that. They are called zoonotic diseases. When something, a virus or a disease can be transmitted between species, meaning a dog and a human, for example, that is called a zoonotic disease. When it is not transmittable between species, for example, something that your dog can get but cannot be passed to you or something you can get but cannot be passed to your dog, that is called a non-zoonotic disease or virus. So that is the clinical terminology for what you're asking, right? What you're talking about, what we're talking about. Zoonotic versus non-zoonotic. And for the uh, current virus that this is the new novel, I'll write it down here. We know that this is a non-zoonotic virus at this point. And it seems that through thousands of tests that have been going on, uh, through IDEX labs, we know that we have had thousands of negative tests and this is a non-zoonotic virus, meaning it is just a human virus. It is not something that we as humans can transmit to our pets. Of course, this terminology exists because there are other viruses and diseases that can be spread between species. So I did want to give you guys just a little bit of context to see some things that can actually be transmitted between you and your pets. The first one being mumps of all things. We know that mumps are a very highly contagious viral disease between humans, but in some rare instances, Veterinarians have noticed the, the same symptoms from mumps can also be transmitted into dogs. And while this is very rare, it has happened. Another zoonotic illness that can be transmitted to and from humans and dogs is ringworm. You've probably heard this one before, and so you're probably not surprised by it at all, but ringworm, that little fungus that gets like under your skin and it looks like a little ring sometimes, that's why they call it ringworm, it'll be like a red ring, can be transmitted between you and your pets. The next one is salmonella. So if you get salmonella poisoning or if your pet does, which it is much more likely to happen to you than it will be to your pet. It can be transmitted between pets and humans. That does not guarantee that it will transmit between you and your pets, but it is possible. Giardia is one of the most common waterborne illnesses in humans, and it can also be transmitted to and from your pets. So for some common illnesses that cannot be transmitted to and from you and your pets, the first is the common cold. The common cold that we get as humans is 
a strain of the C word, a different strain, one that has been around. There are multiple strains, just so you know. There are multiple strains that we have known about for many, many years, have been around for forever, as far as I know. And the common cold is actually one of those strains. Now, this the common cold as we know it, that, that we humans get, is non-transmittable to our dogs. Lyme disease is something else that is not transmittable between humans and animals other than ticks. Ticks actually are the ones that spread Lyme disease, but our companion animals cannot get Lyme disease from us if we get it. And just like if they get it, they can't transmit it to us. Also like the common cold, the flu virus is something that cannot be transmitted to and from us and our dogs and cats. They have their own strain of the flu that they can get just like they have their own strain of the cold that they can get that is not transmittable. They are non-zoonotic illnesses. So just to sum up, to wrap all this up, what we're dealing with right now is currently considered and it seems that it will forever be classified because after the thousands of tests that IDEX has done, the AVMA, the WHO, the CDC, all of these organizations currently consider the current virus going around a non-zoonotic virus, meaning it is a human only virus, meaning it is only affecting humans and is not transmittable to and from our pets. Before we go, I do want to say thank you so much for watching this video and sticking with me. Please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Help my channel grow. I would really appreciate it. And if you're new here, please consider subscribing if you are interested in dog training, dog behavior, uh, nutrition, enrichment. That's what this channel is all about. So please consider hitting that subscribe button. I would really appreciate you helping my channel grow by subscribing and joining the family. Once you hit the subscribe button, a bell will pop up. Click the bell, select all notifications. That way YouTube can notify you every time I post a new video. Thank you so much for being here and watching this video with me. I really appreciate each and every one of you. If you're a returning subscriber, Thank you so much for coming back and hanging with me for just a little while. I really appreciate it. So with that, we'll go ahead and I will link in the description below the second part of this video, which is going to be how to tell if your dog is sick. So let's go ahead and get over to that video. Hey, thanks for watching. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you never miss another video.